Ken Whiting with Paddle TV with yet another paddling tip. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to dress for kayaking. Because dressing for kayaking can be more than just a comfort issue. It can be a safety issue depending on what type? Well, depending on a few factors. And why is it a safety issue? Can it be a safety issue? Well, it can be a safety issue because of hypothermia and hyperthermia. And what are, you probably know what those things are, but to, to as a refresher, hypothermia is when your body temperature drops too much because of the cold. Hyperthermia is when your body temperature rises too much because of the heat. And so you need to protect yourself from those uh, conditions. Um, and there's three factors that really dictate how at risk you are. And you've got water temperature, you've got the type of paddling that you're doing, but you also have air temperature. Now water temperature has the biggest impact on your safety uh, on the water. In particular, you have to be concerned about hypothermia. You have to be concerned about, hey, if you're immersed in the water's cold or cool even, you can freeze. <laughs> Your body temperature can drop too much and it can become life-threatening. Now air temperature can go either way. Air temperature can cause hyperthermia, you get your body temperature raises too much, or hypothermia. Uh, the type of paddling conditions you're in can also result in both. If it's if it's rough conditions, if it's uh, conditions where you have to be very aggressive, very active, your body temperature can come up too much in really hot conditions, but more so it's hypothermia. You have to worry about getting too cold from being doused with water all the time. And so let's, let's start by looking at the easier dressing, which is how to dress when it's nice and hot out or warm out. Now paddling in hot weather, hot conditions, for most people, the biggest concern is getting a sunburn. But hyperthermia is something that needs to be on your radar. And I'll never forget when I saw someone for the first time suffer from it, hyperthermia, heat stroke, and how absolutely debilitating it was. It was, it was terrifying. That was 30 years ago when I was learning to paddle, and that was a lesson that stuck with me ever since. Um, the nice thing is it's very easy to avoid hyperthermia because you're on the water. So even if it's cooking outside, you've got to, and you're dealing with warm water, uh, you, just by splashing water on yourself, getting wet, going for a swim, you can, you can keep hyperthermia at bay, drinking lots of water, protecting yourself from the sun. And so it's, it's quite easy to avoid hyperthermia. Uh, a couple of key pieces of gear that I wear when I'm uh, in really hot conditions and well, hat, you need to protect yourself from the sun. And I had a, a refresher course on the importance of a hat on a trip I just recently did this winter in Dominica. We were kayak surfing and I got slammed by a wave. My hat came off and it disappeared. And I couldn't find it again. And we had plans for the rest of the day to go on this adventure up a river. But, you know, it took about 15 minutes in that hot, Caribbean sun for me to realize, okay, not having a hat isn't just an inconvenience. I just I can't just put sunscreen on my on my uh, forehead and ears and and get away with it. This is this could quickly become a major problem, and so we had to cut the day short. Um, and so, hats really can be a key piece of safety gear. Now, in terms of what you're going to wear on your upper body, what I was wearing was this very thing. This is a silk weight uh, top. This is NRS, I think it's called the NRS silk weight shirt. And it's a really light top that protects you, provides sun protection, but it, 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 it dries quickly, it wicks moisture. It's just, it provides a little bit of a cooling effect on the body when you're, when you're paddling. Um, this is what I wore, or even just a guide shirt, like I'm, I'm wearing right here. And uh, it was that simple. Now down below I was just wearing surf shorts and on my feet I was wearing a water shoe, something that provided foot protection, that fit in the kayak really well, it was very flexible, um, and that drained water, dried quick, but uh, it wasn't too hot, unlike a, a neoprene booty, would have been too much in Dominica. So there you go, quick run over, you know, what to wear in in hot conditions. This, this top here, this is what I was using, but it's very similar to a rash guard, but a loose fitting rash guard. That's another great thing 
to wear if you prefer having more form-fitting uh, clothing. Now dressing for cold water is a bit of a different story. You, you have to take more care because when you're on the water, you can't, if you're starting to get cold, you can't just splash water over your head or jump in the water for a swim and warm up. It doesn't work that way. Uh, so you, hypothermia can quickly escalate. And the biggest danger is finding yourself swimming. Because when you're immersed in water, the water, and the water doesn't even need to be that cold. It, it will suck the heat from your body. The colder the water is, the quicker it will suck the heat from your body. Uh, you know, if you're in water as cold as like 40 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or you know, under 10 degrees Celsius and less, well, um, you know, literally hypothermia can set in if you're not protected when you're swimming in a couple minutes, uh, if, if not less. So what you wear really depends on the, the temperature of the water, first and foremost. How cold is the water? But also the question is, okay, if I go for a swim, how long am I going to be immersed in this water? And so if you're paddling along a, a shoreline and you're close to shore, and it's a shoreline that you know you can get out very quickly and walk back to your vehicle, well, that's a very different situation than if you're paddling offshore uh, quite a ways and a swim back to shore would be very long um, or maybe not even possible. And, and similarly, with What's your skills and expertise? Do you know, are you really 100% confident that if you do go for a swim, that you can get yourself back into your kayak on the water? Or do you not know? Are you not really trained in doing that and you're just hoping that you can? And what's the experience level of the people you're paddling with? There's lots of factors that dictate how protected you need to be, but it actually only changes you know, your protection a very little bit. Ultimately, you do have to dress in a way, in cold water, where you can survive comfortably, survive being immersed in that water for an extended period of time. And so what that means is airing on dressing on the warmer side of things. You know, if you're, if you, uh, if you're wondering, should I wear one layer, two layer, three layer? Well, wear that extra layer or at least bring it along and you can always change. So how do you dress for cold conditions? Um, well, there's two real things to consider. There's your layers that are underneath and then there's the protective outer shell that you're gonna wear. And that outer shell is gonna do one of two things. It's going to either just prevent splashes, cut the splashing and cut the wind or it can also provide a complete dry interior. And that's the difference between splash wear and dry wear. Um, starting at the most protective gear, you've got dry suits or dry tops. A dry top, like this sucker here, it's got latex gaskets uh, around the neck and at the wrists, latex gaskets underneath that right there. Um, whereas a dry suit is a full body suit you zip yourself into and this is completely sealed. If you swim in this thing, you got gaskets in, up the neck and the wrists, it has feet built in, you're gonna stay bone dry or pretty much close to bone dry. Oh. If things aren't that cold, then you might go for a paddling top that doesn't have gaskets around the neck or at the wrist, just neoprene. And that's not gonna be as, uh, as waterproof, but it's gonna be more comfortable uh, for a full day of paddling and less expensive, that's for sure. And you can even get more, even simpler paddling tops than that. If the, if the water is even warmer, the temperatures are even warmer, you don't even need that much protection. A simple raincoat or very simple splash jacket will totally do the trick. What matters just as much as the shell you're wearing is what you're wearing on the inside. And that's where layers um, make a, you know, really make a big difference. Instead of wearing one big layer that can't be adjusted, I would highly recommend wearing a variety of layers if you need a variety of layers, depending on how cold it is. You know, right here, we've got a couple of pieces. This is a silk weight that I use actually when it's warm as a base layer when it's warm or cold because it wicks water uh, very well moisture from the body, I should say. But then this, this awesome onesie here, amazing under a dry suit. Um, 
It's like a micro fleece. It, uh, it's a bit more of an insulating layer. You can wear it as a base layer as well if you want to, but um, you can also wear it over top a base layer or you wear a thicker fleece if you really need some protection from the cold or an another layer on top of this. There's, there's no right or wrong. What you, the key there is you want that first layer against your skin to be able to draw moisture away from your body. Even if you're wearing a dry suit or a dry top, you're still gonna be sweating. You still need to pull that moisture away from your body. And then the second layer on top of that has to be to, prov to provide more insulation, um, more warmth. And it, you may need a third layer, but typically I find two layers are great for paddling because then you don't feel too, like you have too much on and it's reducing your, your mobility. A base layer and then depending on the uh, that wicks moisture and then an insulating layer depending how cold it is it, you know, that'll dictate the thickness of that insulating layer now if you don't have we're just really I just referred to tops there uh, except for the dry suit which covers your tops and bottom um, if you don't have a dry suit and the, the downsides of a dry suit really are expense they're not cheap things to have. So you need to really be paddling a lot in order to warrant getting one. Uh, then wetsuit is another option. A wetsuit, this isn't a super thick wetsuit, but you can get wetsuits that are quite thick and that they will keep you warm in really cold water as well. And they do it by insulating when they're wet. The, the trick with wetsuits is getting them so that they're form fitting, they don't keep you warm if there's space between the material and your body, so they have to fit well. Uh, and by nature, re one of the reasons I don't like wetsuits up top is that they, you know, they reduce your, your mobility, at least thick wetsuits. I'm not a fan of paddling with thick wetsuits up top. Some people are okay with it, some people like it, but um, uh, I'm not a big fan of it up top, but down below, because you don't need as much mobility, they make a lot of sense. And so combining a wetsuit bottom with a dry top is a great way to, that's not bottom, but if that was a wetsuit bottom, that's a great way to more affordably provide, uh, get cold water protection. Otherwise, uh, for your bottoms, you can take the same approach as the tops, is you need an outer layer, a shell, and then some type of insulating layers on the inside, starting with something that will insulate you, but also draw moisture away from your body. And really depends on the water temperature, air temperature, and the type of paddling conditions that you have, how much protection you need. So now let's talk about the exposed parts of your body, hands, feet, and head. Um, but before we do, Actually, I have to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, and that is Outdoor Play. That's where, actually, I'm filming from right now. I still have a couple of feet of snow back at home, so I'm here in Hood River, Oregon, at the Outdoor Play shop. And uh, Outdoor Play is an online store based out of Oregon. They ship worldwide. They uh, offer free shipping in the States for orders under uh, over $49. They have a price match guarantee. Um, they've been around for a long time and they're real, really specialists in paddle sports. So um, I actually been, they were sponsored my video like 20, my, my second video ever 20 years ago. So I've been working with them for a very long time. Uh, and they have a code for you right now, Paddle TV 15 that'll give you 15% off your next order. So hope you can take advantage of that. Um, and so anyway, let's get right back into it. Let's start with foot protection uh, from the cold. Now what I wear myself is, I mean really your best option is neoprene boots or neoprene shoes or booties, anything neoprene because they insulate when they're wet. Um, and they just, they do a good job of insulation. This sucker here, the boundary boot is what I've been using for a couple of decades now for really cold conditions. Um, it's actually not just, uh, you know, it doesn't get wet inside, it's, it's waterproof as well. Uh, but this provides really good, really kind of extreme warmth. On the coldest trips, I'll even wear a neoprene sock, which you can get inside for an added layer of warmth. Beware the stink of neoprene socks though. When things aren't as cold, then a simple neoprene booty 
is the ticket. And there's high cut, there's low cut, there's a variety of boots to choose from. Um, but really, there's, there's no better option when you're paddling in cooler water, cold water, than neoprene booties. They may not be the best looking, they may not smell the greatest, but they do the job. Hands. So, few options for hands. We have, well, for the, what I actually use the most are pogies. And this is a pogie right here. And the idea of the pogie is that it wraps around, in fact, I will show you. It goes over top the paddle, just like that. Now, I can take my hand out, put my hand in very quickly. It's not keeping my hand dry. Water's gonna run down the paddle in, uh, onto my hand, but it's keeping the wind off, it's keeping the splashes off, and it generally generates a little bit of a warmth cocoon in there as well. What I, the reason I like these, even though they're not nearly as warm as a glove or a mitt, is because my hand stays on the paddle. I just have the neoprene on the outside, and so that gives me a lot more paddle dexterity, a lot more control. And I'm often paddling in rough conditions, that's what I love to do, and so that's important to me. But if you're not paddling in rough conditions, um, and you don't need that same level of control, then you may want to get some handware that doesn't, you know, that that provides more warmth. And that's where gloves, paddling gloves come in handy. Now these are some pretty thin hydroskin gloves uh, by NRS and I was just using these, they were still a little, a little damp, used them uh, yesterday evening on the water. Um, it just provides a great layer of insulation when you're paddling. They're not thick, so you still have good, you know, reasonable feel on your paddle. It's not the same as having your hand directly on the paddle though, but not bad. They do have like a little, a bit of traction on the palms. Um, if you need a little bit more, you can get thicker wetsuit gloves that provide more and more protection. Now this is a slightly thicker glove. This is uh, also hydroskin, but it's a thicker hydroskin. I believe that other one was 0.5 millimeters. This is probably one millimeter, something like that. The reason I wanted to show this one is it's not only does it provide more protection, but it has something I really like, which is it's got slits in the finger so I can pop my index finger and my thumb. And now I'm actually got contact with the paddle, at least with my fingers. And that provides a bit more control, but it also lets me, you know, if you're a fisherman, <laughs> you, you can start doing things. You, you're using your phone. It's just very practical to have it. And the reality is when you're paddling, um, those slits that are there, they're covered. So you're really not losing much warmth from this glove at all. And so I'm a real fan of gloves that have that quick access to your, in particular, your index finger, but index and, and thumb is really nice. Now, for your head, uh, we've all heard that you lose a lot of your heat through your head, and so it makes sense to wear something. Uh, for most people, uh, a toque is the, or a beanie for more people, that, you know, for people who aren't Canadian, <laughs> um, is the best protection. Uh, but if you need more protection than that, if you're someone who's paddling in rough conditions, like whitewater paddlers or sea kayakers, there are there is headwear that's neoprene, and just like a glove, you know, it's, it's form fitting, it's tight against the, the head, and it can even be like a balaclava, it just leaves the small window open. It depends on how much protection you need. Uh, and for, you know, for whitewater paddlers, paddlers, they'll often wear a neoprene headpiece underneath the helmet, and that helmet even actually provides some, some warmth too. It really depends on what you're doing, how far you're pushing it, but for most recreational paddlers, uh, you're not in going to be in rough conditions. A, a toque or beanie is usually enough protection as well as you might want to get a, it can make a big difference to have a paddling top that has a hood. Uh, that alone, especially when it starts raining, that can make a big difference. So there you have it. 
a, a very general run through of how to dress for kayaking in hot and cold, cool, any, nearly any types of conditions. I'm going to go even deeper into showing you at some point, I'll, I'll, I'll be doing a video about what specifically I am. I like to wear in different types of conditions, so stay tuned for that one. Uh, as a final note though, uh, something I, I ta I've talked about here is what to wear, and it's probably worth mentioning as a final note what not to wear on the water, and s something you do not want to wear is cotton. Uh, and the reason for that is cotton does not insulate when it's wet at all. In fact, it does the opposite. It has a, it tends to suck heat from your body. And so when you're wearing any kind of dry wear paddle tops, do not wear a, co a cotton underlayer. Now, if you're in super hot conditions, um, you can wear a cotton because it will actually help to keep you cool and protected from the sun. The downside is, Wet cotton tends to just cling to you. It, it doesn't stretch well. It, it's, not, it's not a comfortable thing to wear in general. So yeah, it might keep you cool, but you're not gonna be happy with it. So just avoid cotton on the water altogether. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, stay tuned. We got lots more tips, uh, paddling gear reviews, and paddling adventures coming your way. Uh, if you have anything to add, leave a comment down below. Let people know what your favorite piece of cold, uh, cold weather or warm weather gear is. Um, just get, share your experiences with, with the, the, everybody that's watching this and we'll see you again very soon.